Hey guys, Professor Gooden here to talk about z-scores, what they are, how we use them, and how to calculate them by hand. Okay, as I mentioned in the intro, we'll be talking about z-scores today, as well as some other standard scores. Z-scores are great for converting scores using different units into a standardized score with a known mean and standard deviation so that we can compare those scores to each other. All right, let's learn how to do it. Here we are in the slides, and this comes from Statistics in Kinesiology by Vincent and Ware. Now, if we recall, a normal curve of any data set, we'll plot the scores on the x-axis and the frequency of those scores on the y-axis. Now this is very useful, but what happens when we want to compare two different sets of scores that have different units of measurements? So let's say that we measure the height of a set of individuals and then we also measure their weight, and we want to compare those height and weight values. Well, we can't really do that because they're in different units of measurement. One is in centimeters and the other one is in kilograms. But if we convert those scores into z-scores, now we can compare them because then all those z-scores will have a standardized mean and a standardized standard deviation, right? It's a known mean and standard deviation. So let's learn how to do that. Okay, so here we are with a normal curve showing the raw scores of body mass on the right side. Now, some things to know about this data set. The standard deviation is 11.5 kilograms, and the mean is 79.5 kilograms. So, how do we convert the raw scores into z-scores? Well, a z-score is just a raw score, but it's converted into the units of standard deviation. So, here are the lines marking the standard deviations. Here's plus one and minus one standard deviations from the mean. And it looks like this is right at 91 kilograms, and this is right at 68 kilograms. Now, if we know that the mean is 79.5, and the standard deviation is 11.5, we can see that this distance here is actually 11.5 between these two standard deviation points. And so to calculate a z-score, all we do is we take the score, and we subtract the mean, and we divide it by the standard deviation. So this would equal, or this would be the same as 91 minus uh, 79.5 over 11.5. Let's simplify this, and that equals 1. And same thing with 68. Let's go 68 minus 79.5 over 11.5, and that is going to equal negative 11.5 over 11.5, and that equals negative 1. Now the reason why we go through all of this trouble is that by converting these scores into z-scores. It allows us to calculate the percentage of the area under the curve between the mean and any z-score. The percentage area also defines the percentage of scores. For instance, 34.13% of the scores lie between the mean and a z-score of one in either the positive or negative direction. So if we have a normal curve and here's the mean, a z-score of positive 1 and negative 1, about 34% of the scores lie under the curve. And so we could say that 68% of scores fall between negative 1 to 1 standard deviations above and below the mean. So in this case, for our data, if we calculated that 68 was minus one standard deviation and 91 was plus one standard deviation, then we know that 68% of all of the scores for this data set will fall between those two numbers. 
or about two-thirds. Now here is the formula for calculating z-scores. z equals your score minus your mean over your standard deviation. Now in this example, if we convert it to pounds, it would be 200 minus 175 over 25. So in this case, 200 is the score, 175 is the mean, and 25 is the standard deviation. Now here's a picture of the normal curve with the most frequently used z-scores and percentages marked on it. So we can see that from 1 to negative 1, we have 68% of all scores, like I've just said. But if we go out another standard deviation each way to 2 and negative 2 standard deviations from the mean, then we get an additional about 13.5% on each of those sides. So between negative 2 and 2 standard deviations, we have over 95% of all of the scores. And then outside of that, between 3 and negative 3, we have 99.7% of scores. So we can really see how rare scores become that are above 2 and 3 and even 4 standard deviations from the mean. They're very, very rare because the vast majority of scores lies closer to the mean, right? And two-thirds of it lies between negative 1 to 1 standard deviation above and below the mean. So let's say that you have your VO2 max measured and you are two standard deviations above the mean. That means, according to this normal curve, that almost 98% of the population falls below you. Because if you take the percentage of individuals who are above you, 2.15 plus 0.13, that adds up to not even 3%. So by converting to z-scores, it helps us to visualize the meaningfulness of each data point. Now let's work through some sample problems to help you get the hang of converting to z-scores and then to percentages and then back to raw scores. Okay, so here are the questions we are going to address. What percent of scores fall below a certain body weight? What percent of scores are above a certain body weight? What percent of scores are between two body weights? And what are the scores at various percentiles? Now for this first one, we want to know what percent of scores fall below a body weight of 95.7 kilograms? So the first thing to do is to convert this to a z-score. So I've got the standard deviation and the mean, as well as the z-score formula. So I will take the score, 95.7, subtract the mean, and divide it by 11.5. So let's just do that really quick on a calculator. And we get a z-score of 1.4. Now to calculate the percentage of scores that falls below that z-score, we actually have to use what is called a z-table. Now this z-table tells you the percentage of scores at that z-score. So if we look at it here and we look at a z-score of 0, this should be the mean of that standardized distribution. We can see that half of scores fall below that point. If we go to a z-score of 1, we see that 84% of scores fall below that point. If we wanted to go to, let's say, 1.5, so we go to this row and then we go to this column right here, so 1.5, follow that out, and we would see that 85% of scores fall below that z-score. So in our case, we're looking for a z-score of 1.4. So 1.4 exactly is right here. So we would say 91.9% .9 of scores fall below that score. Let's try another. What percent of scores are above a body weight of 93 kilograms? So let's convert it to a z-score, 93 minus 79.5 over 11.5. Okay, and we get a z-score of 
seven. So let's find 1.17. So that will be this row and this column. So follow that down. And we get a percentile of 0.879. So we would say 87.9%. Now the question was, what percent of scores are above a body weight of 93 kilograms? So this is the percent that are below it, but we would now have to subtract that from 100. So that would be 22.1%. Now, what about the percent of scores that fall between those two scores? Now, we've already calculated those z-scores, but we'll do so again really quick, just so that you can see it. Okay, this time I'm going to the hundredth decimal place on that 95.7 score, which I didn't do the first time. So we have to find these two z-scores and figure out the percentage of scores between them. So let's go back to our z table. And here's the score for 93 again. And remember that was 87.9. But we also have to find it again for 1.41. And that's going to be right here, so 92.07. Now, if we want to figure out the percentage of scores that lies between these two scores, between 93 and 95.7 kilograms, all we have to do now is subtract. 92.07, and we subtract from it 87.9. And that gives us 4.17%. Now, what if we want to know the score at a specific percentile? Then we just work backwards. So if we want to know the score at the 50th percentile, well, that one's easy. We already know that. That would be the mean. But let's just see how to do this. So we go find the 50th percentile or as close as we can get to it on a Z table. And we see that that's associated with a Z of 0. So we are going to then set this equation equal to zero. So zero equals x minus 79.5 over 11.5. And let's solve for x. So we multiply both sides by 11.5. That gives us zero equals x minus 79.5. Move the 79.5 and we get x equals 79.5, pretty easy. But let's try for the 70th percentile. So if I'm scanning through this table and I find the nearest number to the 70th percentile and it looks like it's between these two, but I'm going to go with this one because it's only 0.0015 away instead of 0.0019. And that corresponds with a z-score of 0.52. Okay, so let's go 0.52 equals x minus 79.5 over 11.5. Pull up my handy dandy calculator for this. So let's solve for x. 0.52 times 11.5 equals 5.98. And we add to that 79.5, and that gives us 85.48 kilograms. So a score representing the 70th percentile would be 85.48 kilograms. But what about a score representing the 35th percentile? Now, this is a little tricky because Z tables tend to only show one side of the normal curve of the probability density. So if you notice, this Z table starts at zero and it goes up to 3.4, but it doesn't go negative. But what we can do is we can just invert the numbers in our heads. And so if we want to know the 35th percentile, then we are just going to subtract that number from 100. So let's go 100 
minus 35 equals 65th percentile. So we'll find the 65th percentile here. And that's going to be right here. So 0.39, but because this is below the mean, now it will be a negative z-score. And if it's a negative z-score, then that means it's not going to be 0.39, it will be negative 0.39. So let's set that equation equal to negative 0.39 and see what we come up with. Oops. and we get 75 kilograms. Okay, so hopefully you followed along with those equations. If you need to, go ahead and go back and rewind the video to watch those again. Really, the sequence is going to be this. When you want to figure out a percentile or a percentage of scores that falls above or below a score or between two scores, you convert the raw score to a z-score. And remember that score minus the mean divided by standard deviation. You look that score up on a Z table, which you can find on the internet or in the textbook, and then you either perform some simple arithmetic to subtract or add that to 50% or from 100% to find the specific percentile. Just remember if you're above or below the mean and that will help to guide that. Or if you're looking for the raw score at that percentile, you do the opposite. You find that percentile in the Z chart, you find the associated Z score, and then you solve for X using the Z score. Equation. Now here is an example of how we would compare two very different activities using z-scores. So let's say that you participated in both a long jump and a gymnastics competition. And out of all of the participants, you got a z-score of negative 1.3 in the long jump and negative 0.5 in the gymnastics. Well, from this activity, maybe you learn that a, you're not that athletic of an individual because you were below the mean in both of these very different types of sporting events, but you're a little bit better at gymnastics. So maybe you work on those gymnastics skills to bring yourself up a half a standard deviation so that you're at least average on in those um, in gymnastics. So z-scores are just one type of standard score. There are others as well, t-scores come to mind. But in a z-score distribution, zero is always the mean, and one is always the standard deviation. So even though in that data set that we were just looking at, 11.5 was the standard deviation, once you converted to a z-score, then in those z-scores, the standard deviation was equal to one. The sign of the z-score indicates the direction it is from the mean. So negatives below and positive is above. And that would help us to determine which of these two sports we're better at because now we can compare those scores on this using the same mean and the same standard deviation. All right guys, thanks for learning about z-scores with me today. If you had any questions, let me know down in the comments. Z-scores are super helpful for converting into a standardized known set of scores that have a mean and a standard deviation that is already known so that you know the percent of scores underneath the curve at any score and so that you can compare scores from different units of measurement. Now if you want to check out any other stats videos go ahead and click on the playlist that pops up somewhere on the screen. The next video in this sequence will appear there as well so I'll see you guys on the next video. Track that from a hundred.